can't be hollering and barking like you normally do. Okay? Yes. 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 Okay. Hi guys. Welcome to episode 14 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Our co-host for today is Tootie. Yeah. Um, we'll see how long she will hang out with us. Today is June is Sunday, June 25th, and I am coming to you from my home in Central Florida. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us again. If you are a new viewer, um, welcome. And I hope you enjoy what you see today. I don't have a whole, whole lot um, to share for this particular episode, so let's just jump right into it. We will start out with finished objects. I have two finished objects, but I only have one to show. The other finished object the other finished pair of socks were my Hermione takes a break socks that I made for my mom which I mailed off to her and they reached her and she was super excited about them and they fit yay um, so yeah um, that pair of socks I'll see if I can put a picture up so that you can see them um, of course being the excellent podcaster uh, Ravelry user that I am, I forgot to take pictures of them before I sent them to her. What are you going to do? So um, she snapped some pictures and sent them back to me, so I'll be able to uh, insert, yeah, I should be able to insert um, one or two of them here so that you can see them. Uh, they ended up being like ankle socks, like maybe this high up, um, the leg once they were finished and yeah I called them Hermione takes a break um, because I was using the texture pattern from Erica Luter's uh, Hermione's everyday sock and instead of doing the texture pattern on the whole sock I did two repeats of the pattern and then a section of stockinette and then two repeats of the pattern so that the sock kind of had a textured stripe which worked out pretty cool um, when I finished it um, so yeah, not a whole lot else to say about those socks. Um, yeah, so that makes the second pair of socks that I've knit for my mom. So, she's special, because I don't really knit socks for people, for real, for real. Um, my other finished object are another pair of socks for me, and I have them right here. Ta-da! You like my socks, Tootie? No, you don't want me to hold the socks? You just want me to pet you? Yeah. These are a pair of vanilla socks. Um, one of my goals for this year is to figure out, like, my vanilla sock recipe. So I've been trying different things. Um, none of my ends are woven in, but if you're a returning viewer, you know that, you know, hardly ever do that. So this sock features a one by one rib, uh, it's vanilla so I'll sock in it, one by one rib, um, a short row heel, short row wrap and turn heel, and then a star toe. I'd never done the star toe before so I wanted to try it out because I've heard people you know, like praising it and stuff. This was easier to do than the rounded toe that I was usually doing because with the rounded toe you know you have to kitchener stitch the end which I don't mind so much anymore because I have gotten to the point where I've actually memorized the kitchener stitch which makes me feel really fancy but um with this one you just decrease down to a little tiny bit of stitches and then draw it closed and you're done and like weave in your ends and you're done um the only thing about this is I don't like the way that it fits my toes like because it comes basically to a point like that it it sits kind of funny on on my toes and 
it almost feels like like they're being constrained in sort of a way. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it feels weird on my foot. Don't really like it. So I have learned in these socks I don't like the star toe. Um, so I will be going back to the rounded toe that I normally use. And I do want to do make some modifications to that rounded toe because as I've said earlier, um, I feel like the rounded toe that I currently use is really short. I need to lengthen it a little bit. Um, I also discovered that I don't like one by one rib. I don't like the way it looks. So there's that. And then this whole sock was knit over 60 stitches. Um, I have been using 64 stitches, but I felt like the socks were maybe a little bit loose. So I went down to 60, 60 stitches. And, um, I mean... It's not a huge difference in how the sock fits, and it may just, it may be this yarn, I don't know, but um, I feel like these are kind of like the same amount of looseness, but um, we'll see. Um, I have a work in progress. That's another pair of socks that um, I'm working on 60 stitches as well, so we'll see how that works out. Um... The cast on, I did the German twisted cast on, which is becoming my cast on of choice. Whenever I do cuff down socks, the German twisted cast on, until I find something that is like even stretchier, German twisted is way to go. So that, those are all of my, my sock stats. Fun fact about these socks, this is the second sock, this is the first sock. The first sock. I knit my heel down to 12 live stitches um, in between the wraps and turns. And my second sock, I knit down to 10 live stitches. I did not realize my error until I was like halfway through the foot. And then I was just like, screw that. We'll now see which fits better. The 10, like down to 10 on a wrap and turn heel or down to 12. Spoiler, the 10. So now I know that on my wrap and turn heels, I need to go down to 10 live stitches. Um, going down to 10 live stitches also gave a little bit more space in this area, which I had noticed was being stretched out um, when I did short row heels over my other socks. Um, I haven't filled in any of those holes. Like, see that hole right there? Oh, I could just, no, that doesn't make any sense. There you go. You can see that hole right there. So I haven't uh, woven in any of the holes. These holes were giant. I don't know what I did that made these ginormous holes. But um, I guess I didn't pick up the stitches, right? But whatever. So yeah, there's those. The yarn, I don't even think I have the band with me. But the yarn was... I can't remember. I'll put it at the bottom. Yeah, I'll put it at the bottom because I can't remember what the yarn was. But um, it was a ball that I got at my local Tuesday morning. And I wanted to see if I liked like hand-painted yarn that was painted in sections. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't think it's anything to really write home about. Um, I have uh, one other ball of this, I think, like one other ball of this type of yarn in a different colorway that I'm going to uh, make socks out of. And um, I went to the store recently and they have another one that's like red and pink, like different colors of reds and pinks that I might get. Don't know. We'll see. Um, the yarn was really nice to work with. It has uh, mohair in it, and it was really interesting to work with the, the yarn with the mohair content because none of the other yarns I've used have that kind of content. And so seeing how fuzzy it got, kind of like, I don't know if I really liked it because I just felt like, 
Oh my gosh, they're they're looking messy. I don't really like it. But they are super soft. They're like the softest the softest socks that I have worked or the softest yarn that I have made socks out of. Yes. So yeah, there's those. Another sock, another pair of socks finally for my box of socks. Because I feel like I've been knitting socks, but none of them were able to go in my box. So, yeah. So, that's my only other finished object. Finished socks. Do, do, do. Oh, another thing. These socks, the leg was 60 stitches. And I think I'm going to go up to 80. Because I figure if I go up to 80, that gives me a nice long leg. Plus, there was so much yarn left over from this. I haven't weighed the ball, but it pretty much looks like enough yarn to knit a whole nother sock like I don't need to have that much extra yarn left over from a hundred um a hundred gram skein after I make my my pair of socks like I need to make them longer so that I can use up that yarn so I don't have like extra little bits so I don't know maybe I'll use that and make a set of Rose City rollers or something like that but Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. So that is my only finished object that I have to show. The next things I want to talk about are my works in progress. And this, the past couple weeks have been really emotional for me. Like I've had like I've spoken of it before that I, I have down swings and stuff, right? So the past couple weeks I've had quite a few low days. And whenever I have these low days or I have these down swings, I always want to like make something or, you know, like involve myself or immerse myself in the making of something because it makes me feel better. Um, so that being said, I have a bazillion things that I've started. Um... And I'll just show you. And also, I have figured out the way to get a project finished is mention it on my craft cast. Because once I talk about it on my craft cast and I talk about how I'm losing steam on it and how I don't want to work on it, that becomes the thing that I just like power through. That being said, I have, I have the three by one man socks, the three by one, the, uh, three by one rib black man socks. I have one. I am down to like kitchenering. Like I just need to kitchener this one and it's done. And for whatever reason, I just haven't done it. Like I got to the point, like to the end of the toe and I was like, But no. So let me give you some stats on this. I wonder if I put this on one of my sock blockers. It's probably going to look real stupid because, you know, it's huge. It's not really huge. It's just man size. But then, let's see. Oh, yeah, it's not. Oh, yeah, it does look real stupid. What is? So, you get the point. I'll sit over here so that you can kind of see. All right, so we've got two by two rib cuff um, for 20 rows. Of course, the German twisted cast on. Uh, two by two rib cuff, three by one rib leg. I did a, um, this is the eye of partridge, right? I think so. No, it's not eye of partridge, it's just a slip stitch heel. A heel flap. I did a heel flap and gusset, and then three by one rib down the foot, and rounded toe, which you can't see at all. But oh gosh, one I'm proud of myself for busting this sock out. Um, two, I am proud of this heel turn because the yarn that I'm using is this 
uh, Deborah Norville Everyday Baby. It's a like a DK weight um, acrylic that I got from Joann's. And it's really soft. I really like it. I'm making these for a uh, member at my church. And I didn't want to use like a wool and then run the risk of him shrinking them. So I was just like, acrylic it is. You can just throw that in the wash and keep it pushing. But anyway, back to the heel turn. So because it's a DK weight yarn, I had gone on Ravelry and just looked up like DK weight man socks. And I was just going to do the um, heel flap and gusset, you know, from that pattern. But when I found the pattern, like the stitch counts, the, the stitch number was different. And it just, I don't know, like I didn't want to just take that from that pattern and go on with it. I wanted to figure out, like find out how to make this myself. So I Googled um, the math of a heel turn and I found this website, which I will link um, in the down bar or the description bar or whatever. Um, I found this website that broke down, it had to be like five different types of heel turns, like five different shapes of heel turns and broke down the math for them. So whatever your stitch count is, it tells you how to create that shape heel. So that was awesome. And I definitely bookmarked that. Uh, so I was able to, you know, like construct this heel turn without like a pattern per se. So I, I have all of my little stitch markers everywhere to keep track of how many rows I knit and everything like that so that I can reproduce the second sock. Um, and I think that in addition to, like after I finish this pair for the guy at my church, I think I'm going to knit my husband a pair of these because I've been trying these on him and he said they're really comfortable. So I think he's going to get a pair of socks. Aren't I nice? Right? So yeah. Those are what I have been referring to as the most boring socks in the world. <laughs> They're so boring. The only thing that will make these socks more boring is if they were vanilla. And I, I wouldn't be able to handle... Actually, if they were vanilla, I probably would have gone faster because I wouldn't have to count like the three by one ribs. So that's them. And this is how much yarn I have left from the first ball. A little bit irritated because when I weighed the second sock, it is, what was this, 100 grams? It's 113. This is 113 grams. I may be able to get the second sock out of this. Then I don't have to use this. Then I can exchange it for another color. Anyway, I bought this because I thought I was going to run out of yarn, like with 20 grams to spare. And that really irritated me because then I was like, I'm going to have all of this yarn for no reason. But I might be able to eke this second sock out. We'll update you later. That is living in one of my early Quirky Monday bags um, where I was making the bags just for myself. Um, yeah, my large bag. So that is my half object. The next thing that I want to show you is kind of, um, all right, this episode is going to have a lot of jumping around like craft wise, but I am feeling a little bit like I have my hands everywhere. Um, blame it on the fact that I just had coffee a little bit ago and sippy sippy. Ooh. I got this mug from a thrift store. It makes me smile. 
because my dad is from Kansas City. We're on target. We're on, that's not it. We're on, what's it called? When you're like, on task. All right, so my next work in progress is a sewing work in progress. And ever since I made the um, tablecloth dress, it has reignited my desire for hand sewn garments. So I am like low key, not really participating in the outfit along, but being inspired by other people who are actually participating in the outfit along because it's like one of those summer uh, make-alongs where you sew a garment and then you knit a garment to go together to make an outfit. And I just don't think that I can really do both of those things over the summer. I probably can, but... So this is the pattern that I'm making. And I'm going to make view B because I just love that shape. Like, if I could have all the dresses in this, like these two, I would be a happy camper. So this is Simplicity 1873 by Cynthia Rowley. And like I said, I'm making view B. And this is the fabric that I'm using. I'm super crunk, y'all. Guys, this is all my favorite colors, like yellow, green, and orange. These are my favorite colors. And so I got this from the same fabric store, the sewing studio in Maitland that I got the African print, the, the African print fabric um, a couple weeks ago. So I went in there because I got a coupon for like um, I think it was something like 40% off, like one cut. So I was like, bet, I'm about to go. I'm going to get fabric for this dress. I hadn't decided what dress I wanted to do. So I was like, I don't know how much I'm going to need. So I'm just going to get four yards. So I went in there, um, and picked out the fabric, had the lady cut my four yards, you know, picked up some like fat quarters or some other fabric and stuff. And I go up to the register and as the lady is ringing up my stuff, I pull up the coupon and I see it starts the following day. Guys, I wanted to cry because um, Lamar and I were going out of town and when we came back, the, the sale will be over. And I really hadn't budgeted spending like the full price of this fabric like I specifically went there with this coupon in mind so I was like oh my goodness like can you hold it like how can we make this work because I really want the fabric but I didn't budget like this like I don't have nearly forty dollars to spend right now right so the lady's like no it starts tomorrow we can't honor it and I was like well I guess I'm not going to be able to buy it. And like, I wanted to cry. Like, I could feel the tears, like, behind my eyelids. Like, you know that stinging feeling you get when the tears are coming, but you want to be, like, a grown-up and not cry in the fabric store? So, one of the other cashiers was like, oh, well, people have been coming in and using that coupon, and, you know, if they show it to us on their phone, because it went out today, we've been honoring it. And I was like, oh. and the lady was like, no, we're not supposed to do that. So she was like, the other lady goes, well, why don't you just, you know, call whatever the manager's name was. So I'm just like, oh, Jesus, please. I just, I just want this fabric. I had had like a crappy day. Like I got nearly cussed out on the phone multiple times that day. It was like a trash day. I almost cried a few times, like. I'll go, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But I was just like, this, this was supposed to be the one good thing in this day. And now I'm not going to be able to get it. So she calls the manager 
And she talks to him. She's like, yeah, I told her that it starts tomorrow. And nah, 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 nah. And she's like, okay. So I'm like getting myself ready. Like I'm the type of person that if I feel like this can go badly, I prepare myself for the worst so that if you say anything else that's not the worst, it's good. So I'm like, all right, so she's going to say that I can't have it and that there's nothing they can do and whatever like that. So I'm like, okay, so you're just not going to buy the fabric. That's fine. So she comes back over to me and she's like, well, I spoke to the manager and he said, well, she's come all this way, so just let her use the coupon. And I was like, you guys don't even understand. Like, today has been the worst day ever. And... I just wanted this fabric to make a dress. Like, it was... I'm just proud of myself that I didn't ugly cry. But I did, like... There was there were some tears in the corner. Like, like that one tear. Like, that Denzel Washington tear. It happened. So I was like, you know... Like, I talked to them for a little bit. And, um... I had one of my bags with me. That I was using, like... Like, as a purse. And I had set it down on the counter. She was like, oh, where'd you get your bag? And I was like, I made it. And she's like, oh, my goodness, really? So then, you know, just went into this whole, like, oh, I make things, you make things. We're going to talk about making things. And I was just really happy that this fabric is mine now. So this is actually the extra after I've cut the pieces for the dress. So I have cut all of my pieces. I've cut my lining, like my bodice lining. I just have to start the sewing. Well, I have to mark everything, and then I have to start the sewing. But all this is extra, so I, I overpurchased, but I don't care because I'm going to use all this fabric. So yeah, so that is my, my sewing work in progress. Um, I don't know when I'm going to finish it. It's not, it's not like I have to sew this now because I want to wear it now, but... Please believe when I finish it, y'all will definitely see it and I'll be super excited about it. So, the next thing that I want to talk about is kind of a reaction to how I've been feeling lately. Like I said, whenever I start feeling down, I like to immerse myself in making or doing something creative because that is the space that that I feel most at peace in so I I don't even know what it was it almost feels like because I'm, I'm thinking back in my weeks like in the past couple weeks trying to figure out what the point was that ignited all of this and I I can't put my finger on it, but I woke up one day and I just had all of these ideas just in my head, just going like this, running just everywhere, right? And um, at the beginning of the year, I had made a goal for myself um, to design some crochet shawls. And I came up with this um, idea that I want to design a collection of shawls, um, all crochet, and that are based off of my favorite constellations in the winter night sky. So the goal is to have Cassiopeia, Orion, um, Gemini, Boots, and Canis Major. Those are my five favorite constellations. Like during the winter, this is going to make me sound like a super nerd. I mean, I've already made myself sound like a super nerd before on this podcast, but whatever. During the winter, I will go outside and just look for them. And I feel like when I look up and I see them, we're good. I'm just going to leave that one there. So these are like my, my favorite surrounding constellations. And what better way to carry them with me all the time than to design shawls based around them. Now I'm a details person or I get really, really, um, 
it's not detail oriented that I get. I get really specific with the details as to why this particular thing correlates to this particular, to this other thing. So I have my little sketchbook and I've drawn out my ideas and, and the concepts behind each shawl. And I want each shawl to tell its constellation story. So I'm currently working on my Orion shawl and my my idea for Orion is going to mix like quite a few techniques and textures. It'll have some fillet crochet, some um, like textured stitches, as well as some baubles. So this is what I have been doing at work. Let me see I hold it this way so that you can see and this is like this is the equivalent of I think of a writer's rough draft so don't mind this this is me doing the fillet crochet the wrong way like all of the holes were supposed to be filled in and all the filled in were supposed to be holes and I didn't realize it until I finished the whole chart and I was like dang nab it so then I, I did it again up here so we'll hold it on my shirt. So you've got an arrow, um, for, you know, his archery, Orion that is, and then we have the baubles and then here I've been, I tested out, you know, here, here and here. I tested out two different textures to see what they looked like, which one I liked best. And then here I was testing out, um, the baubles, how big I want to make them, but I'm so excited about this. And when I, because each one of these little sections is like a section in the shawl, I have it in my head and it just, it feels good. And I feel like I sound like a crazy person, but it's okay because I feel okay in my craziness. Like, this this makes me feel like the things I'm seeing in my head, I can actually bring them into real life, like into reality. And sidebar, I read this book by Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic. If you are a creative person, and you like to read, you should totally read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Awesome book. Amazing. I need to buy it. But um, yeah, so I read it. And one of the things that she said a lot was that ideas, she had this concept of an idea being like a disembodied something, spirit almost. And that idea wants to be made real and we are the conduits by which an idea gets to come into the physical world so she was like um you know you kind of have this vision of all these ideas floating around and they're looking for for the person who is at the right moment with the right openness so that they can be made real and that's really how this feels like like I had the the desire to make a thing and I knew kind of what way I wanted the thing to go but for whatever reason my drawings or my doodles they were only getting so far until this one particular point where it just flowed and it came out provided this is like a whole bunch of scribbles but it makes sense and I cannot wait to create this piece, to create this shawl and to share it with you because I'm super excited about it. So there's that. So I have this one um, that is being, that is actually to the, the making part. That's Tootie walking around. You wanna come back up? You wanna come back up here? No? All right, that's fine. So I have this one. I have Orion, who is to the point of actually making and seeing what it looks like. And then I have 
um, Gemini is drawn up, and I, I'm excited about Gemini's um, design. Um, Cassiopeia, we will be revisiting. Uh, Boots and Canis Major, they're, I don't have them together yet, but the feeling that creating these designs is giving me is really carrying me through um because I mean I've mentioned I worked I think I've mentioned it that I work at a call center and I work at a call center and people can be really mean on the phone and bless you and I I feel like I can only take so much I wasn't paying enough attention to you. It's true. I know. Sit down. Sit down. Stay a while. So people can be really mean on the phone. And I feel like I get to the point where I can take, I can only take so much of people yelling at me for something I didn't do until I just, I feel like I'm, like I just, I can't. So being able to, in between these calls, activate like my creativity my cre ugh, I said that stupid activate my creativity um, and access that that peace and that joy that it brings me has been so good um, so yeah so there's that and then with that design I also um, kind of started designing a sock pattern that happened and I, I literally just came up with this, or rather started this, um, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Um, it is, I'll show you. I have this book that I got from, from the library. And I love stitch dictionaries like this. Um, I have the, the crochet equivalent, but I definitely think I am going to buy this book because it has, you know, regular you know, stitch s stitches, um, cables, lace, edgings, everything. And I, I finished, since I finished my socks, I was like, okay, of course you have to cast on another one. That's like the cosmic rule of knitting, right? Finish a sock, start a new one. And I originally planned to do the Socks, socks on a plane? Snakes? No, snakes on a plane is the movie. Socks on a plane is the um, pattern. But I had planned to do socks on a plane. Can't remember the name of the designer, but I will put it at the bottom. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I had planned to do socks on a plane with this particular yarn, but when I grabbed it um, yesterday, it didn't want to be socks on a plane so I started doing a cuff and then I thought okay I want to make something else so I am making let me see if I can find the stitch in here I am making a pair of socks using this mock cable pattern that I found in this book let me see if I can find it for you real quick I'm sorry guys, I just kind of got caught um, caught up in that one. It's called the... Hello? Yes? What can I do for you? Stop staring at me so... She's being such a weirdo. I wish you could see her weird staring into my soul eyes. Um, anyway, the pattern that I'm using is called the Mock Cable Ribbing, I think. I feel like there's another word in there. Mock Cable Eyelet Rib. I can't find it. But 
it's a mock cable eyelet rib and I guess I can show it to you. I'm doing a whole lot of chit chat in this episode. I thought it was going to be short. I lied. I'm sorry. Please continue loving me. So this is what it looks like so far. So you've got like the mock cable. So I guess I'm still doing like a cable-y kind of thing with this yarn. It's not socks on a plane, but I like the idea of creating something myself. So yeah, so there's that. And I'm, I'm creating and it feels, oh, it feels so good. So that is living in one of my other bags. I don't know if I've shown this. I feel like I've shown this before. Um, this is a prototype bag that I'm testing out. I'm still working on getting the sizing right, but it is. Of course, as you can see, a round top. And what I really love about the round top is this. Look how wide that goes. Like, don't mind the stitching around the inside. I was just playing around with the shape. But it's huge. So that's one thing I really enjoy about this bag. But anywho, um, the last whip I have is my spinning whip living in another quirky Monday large bag and let me show you this is the first ball of singles that I have finished for the uh, spindle along as well as the Spin For All 2017. So I have that and um, I am now spinning the colors. And let me show you what I have here. And this is this is being spun on one of my handmade spindles. Handmade by me. I'm spinning from Rolex, but this, oh, let's do it this way so we can see the light. You can see the three different colors there. You've got kind of a, a gold mustardy color there, and then orange, and then this uh, rusty, like rusty brown. Now I have a whole lot of these rusty brown ones to do, and then after that I'll be doing this reddish brown. So yeah, so that's my spinning whip, and I am happy to report that my handmade spindles are doing quite a good job. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of them. They're working much better than I really expected them to. The first, um, this bit was spun on this spindle. which is one that I made and then I have they're the same size not the same thickness and this one of course is smooth around but they're both pretty good so I'm very proud of myself with that um, I wanted to show you because last last episode when I was talking about you know my like first getting into spinning I mentioned that I bought this huge um, dream catcher with, you know, for the fiber. And I have been, uh, like, I look at my time hop every day. And this came up recently. All right, let's see if you can see it. Yep, that is the dream catcher. That right there. And then that's all the fiber that I got from it. And then creating the Rolex. And I used these uh, slicker brushes as um, carding combs or whatever you call them to create the Rolex. And then I spun from them. But that's what it looked like when I first bought it. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? So yeah, so that's my spinning. 
I have not spun in about a week, so I need to get back on there. Like, get on the good foot with the spinning. Um, I haven't started my sith and spin, uh, but we do have the, the first Star Wars to watch. So I'm thinking this week I will watch the first Star Wars which I think is like the fourth movie. I don't know how all that works. Sounds really confusing to me. But we, we, we've already covered my non-knowledge of Star Wars. So we're just going to not even open that can of worms again. So yeah. Um, I think I'm going to start my Sith and Spin this week. And yeah. So that's the end of all of my works in progress. I have sewing things going. I have crochet, which I'm so glad to be back with crochet because, you know, that's my first yarn language. Got some crochet going. I've got some knitting going. I have some spinning going. I'm pretty certain that I have at least one thing going in all of the crafts that I do. Tootie's just, just making, making racket. Making a ruckus. Stop making all that noise. You keep too much noise, girl. So, now is going to be quite an interesting point of the craft cast this week. My stash acquisitions. So, I have a big old bag to share with you. Now, excuse the crinkles because these are kind of the annoying ones, like. Okay, so I have some, some things to show. All right, Tootie didn't want to be part of the uh, craft cast anymore. That's fine. So, Not this past weekend, but the weekend prior to that, um, my husband and I went up to Gainesville for um, like a church, almost kind of retreat type thing. But um, we got up there Friday and he had like a, a program to go to, but I didn't have anything to do. So as you do, you Google local yarn shops. Or as I love to do, yarn shops near me. Search. So I found Yarn Works in Gainesville, Florida. This isn't really a, a card, but yeah, anyway. So I found Yarn Works and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to this yarn shop and I want to get, I really want to get fiber. But if they don't have any fiber, then I'll get like a ball of yarn or something like that so that I can have like souvenir yarn from this trip, which is a thing that I really want to do. But anyway, so I find my way to Yarn Works. And as soon as I walk in, there was literally like, like you come in the door and like right here was a huge thing of fiber for spinning. And I was just like, it's for me. So... I looked through the fiber and I was like, okay. And then I walked around the rest of the store and I'm the kind of yarn shopper that touches everything. Like, I think the feel of the yarn is almost more important than the color to me initially. So like, I'll be walking along and touching things and if something grabs my attention, like tactily, is that a word? Gonna be a workout now. Uh, if something grabs my attention tactily and then I like a color that is there and it is within the budget, then you know that's where my attention goes. So I was walking around, I was touching all the things, and um, I decided I actually didn't buy any yarn, I only bought fiber. So the first one that I bought was 100% domestic wool, four ounces. $7.50. 
I wanted to buy so many more of these, but they only had like three colors. So I got this colorway. It's called Shiitake. And it's actually a nice like mid-tone heathered gray. Yeah. And I love it. I'm so excited for this. I can't handle it. Oh my word. Just there we go. Just look at that. How pretty are you? So yeah, I got this. They had another one that was like white with some sort of sparkle in it. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, I can get that and dye it. But then I was like, slow your roll, homie. You don't know how to dye fiber. So yeah, so I got this instead. And then I got this and it makes me so happy on the inside. Hello, gorgeous. Just, just look at it. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything it's so pretty like there was another braid of green fiber from the same dyer um that had silk content and I really wanted to get it was the same price had silk content and I was like oh I should get that but just the dark green in this one it was all the same tones in the silk one but it didn't have the dark green and the dark greens in here just like spoke to me. <laughs> this makes me so happy. I can't handle it. Um, but yeah, so this is Merino, Bamboo, and Nylon. And um, I'm super excited to spin this. So once I finish my... Um, I, I don't, what am I even calling it? Once I spin, finish my... My dream catcher spin, I will be spinning this. Oh my goodness, this is so warm. I'm so, I'm so excited, guys. This is so beautiful. Green is like my, my color. Yeah. Let me just, this is my first braid of fiber that I've purchased. And I think this is my most fancy fiber that I've purchased, like blend wise. And I'm just excited to have it. So those are my purchases from Yarnworks in Gainesville, Florida. And then I, um, a couple a couple weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, um, one of my friends asked me to hem a pair of her husband's pants for him. So I was like, okay, yeah, bring them over. So, you know, we went through, pinned them up, got them hemmed. It's fine. And she was like, okay, how much do you want me to pay you? And I was like, and she was like, no, you, like, I have to, like, I'm going to pay you. So let me know how much. And so, um, she, they needed the pants because they were going, you know, out of town for a, like a family event or something. So I was like, well, instead of like paying me with the monies, you can pay me with yarn. <laughs> and she was like, okay. So I looked up a yarn shop in the area where she was going to be and sent it to her and she was like all right so we'll go to the yarn shop and pick you up something and she asked me if there were specific colors that I wanted and I told her no um I basically told her just get something fingering weight um a sock yarn you know because I can get other weights pretty easily but sock yarn is kind of hard um so I told her dealer's choice with the colors and 
when they got back into town, I started getting really stressed out. Like, oh my gosh, what if she picked a color that I hate? I don't know why I was thinking this because we had been roommates for quite a while. So I'm pretty sure she wouldn't pick something that I would like hate. And it's pretty hard to find a color combination that I hate. I don't know. I was just being weird. So she came back with these two. Well, let me show you where she went first. So just in case you find yourself in Connecticut, she went to Knit and Pearls in Avon, Connecticut. And look, they have all these things, all these, all these classes and open knit and stuff like that. Come on, Central Florida, Central Florida yarn shops. I need somebody to stay open past five. Somebody. Anyway. So she came with this, which is a heritage, um, who is this? Cascade Yarns Heritage Sock Yarn, which I'm really excited about because this is a yarn that I made my Oakwood shawl out of, and I really enjoy it. And I have quite a bit of yarn left from the Oakwood shawl that might get mixed in with this. I don't know. But it's a beautiful gray. There you go. That's the, that's the right color gray. So, and that, and then she also gave me a Painted Desert, which one of our local yarn shops down here, the one that closed, that actually had a yarn, a knit night, they sold this brand, and I never bought myself any. I should have, but I didn't, and this goes through like, like a, a soft gradient of colors, and I am so excited about this. Look at that yellow green. Mmm. It's so delicious. So delicious. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. I don't think they should go together. Although that would be really nice to have something created with both of these things since they were given to me at the same time and from the same people. But, mmm. Mmm. So I have that and that. And those are my yarn payments. It's a wonderful world when you can be paid in yarn, I tell you. It's a beautiful world when you can be paid in yarn. And then the last thing that I want to show you are just some basic yarns that I picked up from Joann's, which if you have a Joann's near you and you want sock yarn, you might want to check your uh, Joann's for the Serenity sock weight by, who's this, Deborah, Deborah Norville again, because... I found out today that these are being discontinued in the stores, so they're going to go on clearance. These are each uh, $3.97 a ball, so, and they're 50 gram balls, right? Yeah, yeah, 50 gram balls. They are 50% superwash merino, 25% rayon from bamboo, and 25% nylon, so very good, like, sock yarn. They're very soft. And um, this is the same yarn that I'm making the, the, the green socks out of. So I got two of each. Yeah. And a crochet hook. Because I'm getting back into crochet and it's making me so happy. So that, guys, is all of my fibery goodness that I have purchased and been given over the past few weeks and I don't need to buy any more yarn I think I'm set with yarn for future sock projects I have a list of sock patterns that I want to knit and yeah I think I think I have enough yarn to successfully work my way through that list that's everything um I have rambled on like nobody's business um I did want to take a moment oh my goodness oh this is what people are talking about whenever they take out fiber on a podcast they're like oh there's fiber in my nose because it is it's everywhere okay so that's all of my 
my works, my new stuff, my fibery sewing fabric doings. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is my next shop update. As you may know, I have started my Etsy shop where I'm selling zipper bags. Um, I have large bags like this, medium bags like that, and small bags like this. So, um, It's been really cool having the shop up and it makes me feel really accomplished in in the way. Um, so I I still have, you know, of course stock that's up in the shop right now. So if you are interested, you can check out Quirky Monday Crafts. Um, the link will be in the description bar as well. Um, but my next update I have set for July 10th and that is a Monday and I am going to have a space bag themed update. So I have some of the fabrics uh, cut that I wanted to share with you so that you can kind of get an idea of uh, what to expect in that update. And yeah, so... There's going to be, we'll show this side because I like this side best. And these are my small bags. So these will be this size. That. Then we have. One second. This one. And this fabric um, I'm really excited about because it's glow in the dark. So there's that one. This one. Oh, and the back, the other side is pretty cool. So these are the two sides of that fabric. Uh, these fabrics are giving me such joy. Such joy. So awesome. And then that one. Oh, I have to show both of those. That will be going in. And this is the last one. The last small or yeah, the last small bag. Um so those are the small bags that I'm going to be making up and there are some other space fabrics that I have found that I really like so there may be some additional patterns in there. Um, as of right now there will be one of each like one of each pattern. I'm going to try to do one of each pattern in each size um, but we'll see. But I have the small bags cut and I have large bags cut. So this is the large. Oh, this is one of my favorite, my favorite um, space fabrics that I have in my collection. Actually, I may have lied. This might be my favorite one. I don't know. Um, I love the orbits on this one. This that's pretty awesome and then this is the back side of this one lots of lots of planetary action in that but those are those are the bags that are currently on the cutting the cutting table they need their contrast fabrics and their linings um, but yeah so July 10th I will be having a space themed update so if you are interested in space themed project bags or makeup bags or trinket bags, whatever you want to use a little bag for, check it out. Um, for now, the bags that are up in the shops, 
the shops. There's only one. The bag's up in the shop right now. There's a lot of um, fun, bright patterns and things like that. Um, and my large bags, I have uh, quite a few of my vintage fabric ones in the shop. So definitely take a look if you are interested. Um, favorite the shop so that you can uh, check back and see whenever I have updates, things like that. Of course, I am definitely open to um, working with you for custom bags or custom kind of fabric uh, combinations. My fabric stash is growing in quite a shameful way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm just excited in general about the different things that I'm making and the different things that I'm creating and um, being inspired to create. So this is the last thing um, that I wanted to mention. Last episode, I shared a poem and I asked if you guys had any poetry assignments that you wanted to give me. and. Thank you guys so much. I got three different assignments and um, the first one that I'll be working on was given to me by Chanel of the Piper Nail Podcast. Hi! And they asked me to write a poem using the words unraveled, undone, and unwound. Um, they said it doesn't have to be those exact tenses, but they want me to use those words. So I started kind of working on an idea um, and my hopes are to have that poem ready for next episode. I also got a request to write a poem for fiber artists, which I'm thinking about kind of joining that one with this, with the, um, unraveled, undone, unwound. And then the other, um, poem assignment I got was from Suzanne. And Suzanne asked me to write a poem about joy using the words weeping, solitude, and path. That one is going to, I feel like that one has a lot of weight in it. So um, I'll be working on that one after the undone poem. But I definitely appreciate you guys giving me these poetry assignments. And still, if you have um, a topic that you want me to write a poem about, or you want me to write a poem using certain words, leave them down below in the comment section, because I am feeling so inspired to create that I want to immerse myself in creativity in as many different ways as possible. So help me be great. <laughs> leave me comments down below with your recommendations or not your recommendations, your assignments. Um, if you want me to write a certain type of poem, leave the poem type down below and I will, I will do it. Um, yeah. So that is everything for this episode, guys. Thanks so much for hanging in there with me. I know this one ended up being really long, probably because I don't know when to shut up. Sorry. Um, but yeah, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for spending some time with me. Um, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, share them down below. I love reading your comments. Um, I love the interaction that, that I see on these different, um, episodes and it just, it's really great that I, whenever I get to interact with you guys. Um, so yeah, I hope this week is full of moments of joy for you. Um, have a great week. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.